The quantum universe is full of some pretty mind-boggling phenomena. I'm gonna do my best to explain it. I've done my best to understand it, but uh, let's just jump right in. Some of this stuff is nuts. One of the biggest mysteries scientists have about our universe is why there is more matter than antimatter. So first off, what is the difference between matter and antimatter? Well, matter is what everything around us is made of. Atoms, molecules, everything. Antimatter is essentially the opposite with particles that have the same mass but opposite charge to their matter counterparts. Now, according to our current understanding of physics, when matter and antimatter come into contact, they annihilate each other. So if the universe had equal amounts of matter and antimatter when it began, they should have annihilated each other, leaving nothing behind. Thankfully though, that's not the case. We're surrounded by matter. We have stars and planets, entire galaxies. Me and you are made of matter. Antimatter is much more rare. Scientists find it in cosmic rays and particle accelerators. So this lopsidedness between matter and antimatter is a bit of a mystery. Scientists have been trying to figure out why there's this imbalance for decades. There are some theories, but none have been definitively proven yet. One idea is that maybe in the early universe during the Big Bang, there were tiny differences in how matter and antimatter behaved. These differences could have led to a slight excess of matter, which then went on to form all the stuff we see today, but we really don't know for sure. Next up, we have quantum tunneling. So let's just pretend we have an electron trapped in an energy well. For the sake of this, we'll just imagine this well is like a valley surrounded by very tall mountainous hills. In theory, the particle would need enough energy to climb over the hills to escape the well. But that's not always the case. Quantum tunneling is this phenomena where particles pass through barriers that according to physics should be impossible to cross. Even if a particle doesn't seemingly have enough energy to overcome a barrier, there's still a small probability that it'll just tunnel through anyway. This phenomenon is pretty important in various fields like electronics and nuclear physics. For example, it's the reason why electrons can escape from atoms in a process called electron emission. But why is quantum tunneling such a mysterious thing, you ask? Well, for one, it's just not how things work in our everyday experience. Like, we, we're not encountering objects spontaneously passing through barriers without any visible means of doing so. But at the quantum level, tunneling happens all the time. Another mystery is the question of why some particles tunnel and some don't. If we watch a pot of water on the stove, does it boil faster? If we stare at our fingernails long enough, will they grow faster? Of course not. I mean, that's just a preposterous idea, right? Well, not at the quantum level, apparently. The quantum Zeno effect is this strange phenomenon where frequent observation can actually prevent, say, an atom from changing or evolving. It's named after the Greek philosopher Zeno, who rejected the idea of space, time, and motion. And this phenomenon is named after him because it does show how constant observation can make it seem like an atom isn't changing at all. Even though, if it wasn't constantly being measured, it would have changed, if that makes any sense at all. Yeah, this took me some time to wrap my head around. Let's look at it this way though. If you leave an atom alone, it can evolve or change freely according to the laws of quantum mechanics. For example, it might decay from an excited state to a lower energy state. But if you keep checking on it frequently, like shining a light on it, measuring it, you basically freeze its evolution. It, I don't know, pretty nuts. Electrons can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like behavior in a phenomenon known as wave-particle duality. So imagine you're watching a tennis ball being thrown at a wall. Normally, you'd expect it to behave like a particle. It has a specific position, and you can predict where it'll bounce. But if we shrink down to the quantum level and throw an electron at a barrier, it doesn't behave like a neat little particle. Instead, it spreads out like a wave passing through multiple holes in the barrier simultaneously. This duality means particles can have characteristics of both waves and particles depending on how we observe or measure them. When we're not looking, they behave like waves spreading out and interfering with themselves. But when we try to measure them, 
they suddenly act like particles with specific positions. This is kind of hard to wrap our heads around because we're used to things being either one thing or another, not both at the same time. And to make things even more confusing, observing or measuring the particles can actually influence their behavior, as we stated before. This is the famous observer effect in quantum mechanics. It's as if the particles know when we're watching and change their behavior accordingly. What does this all mean in the grand scheme of things? I have no damn idea, but if scientists are intrigued and confused by it, then so am I. Next we have quantum entanglement, which seems to ignore the laws of space and time altogether, and if that's not baffling, I don't know what is. Imagine you have two particles that become connected, to the point that the state of one particle instantly influences the state of the other, no matter how far apart they are. Sounds crazy, but this is a thing. When two particles are entangled, scientists can measure the polarization of one particle and find it to be, say, vertically polarized, and then instantly know that the other particle's polarization is the exact same, even if it's thousands of miles away. It's pretty obvious why this is crazy. In everyday physics, something can only really have an effect in one general area, and nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. But with quantum entanglement, changes to one entangled particle seem to happen instantaneously, regardless of the distance between the two. This phenomenon has even led Einstein to call it spooky action at a distance. Scientists have tested quantum entanglement in tons of different experiments, and every time it holds up. But as for exactly why, we don't know for sure. It's almost like the particles are telepathically communicating. And quantum entanglement plays a big role in quantum teleportation. Teleportation. Yeah, I like the sound of that. We're getting science fiction-y now. So imagine you have two people, dude one and dude two, and they want to send information about a quantum particle from dude one's location to dude two's location. Problem is, you can't make an exact copy of a quantum state and then send it through space. So instead of trying to copy the quantum state and send it directly, Dude 1 and Dude 2 use a process called quantum teleportation. The first dude and the second dude create a pair of entangled particles, like we discussed before. Again, now they're connected, so whatever happens to one particle instantly affects the other, no matter how far apart they are. Dude 1 then combines the particle he wants to teleport with his half of the entangled pair and performs a special measurement on both particles. This measurement changes the state of the entangled pair in a very specific way, depending on the state of the particle he wants to teleport. Next, he sends the results of the measurement to dude 2 using regular communication, like a phone call or an email. This information doesn't actually contain the quantum state of the original particle, instead it's just some instructions for dude 2 on what he needs to do next. Armed with the first guy's instructions, now, and half of the entangled pair, Dude 2 performs some operations on his entangled particle, transforming his particle into an exact copy of the original particle that Dude 1 wanted to teleport. Basically, Dude 2's particle takes on the state of the original particle as if it were magically transported from Dude 1's location. Alright, what exactly is responsible for gravity? Well, in quantum field theory, gravitons are the root cause, the carriers of the gravitational field. The thing is, they've never actually been observed. Gravitons have just been proposed by scientists to explain how gravity works on a very tiny scale, like inside atoms. In the world of tiny particles, everything seems to be controlled by these tiny particles called bosons. For example, photons are bosons that carry light. Scientists think that gravitons might be the bosons that carry gravity. The problem is, unlike light particles, gravitons, if they really do exist, must hardly interact with anything, making them super hard to detect. So even though we think they might be out there, we haven't found a way to prove it yet. But if we ever do catch a graviton, it could unlock a whole new understanding of how gravity works at even the smallest levels. 
Alright, another one of the biggest mysteries of modern science is dark matter. Dark matter is a substance that makes up a large percentage of the universe, but it doesn't emit, absorb, or reflect light, which makes it invisible. We only know that it exists because of the gravitational effects that it has on visible matter, you know, stars and whatnot. Scientists have some ideas about what dark matter could be, though. One leading theory is that it could consist of undiscovered particles that interact weakly with regular matter and light, hence the term dark. These particles don't form atoms like the ones we're familiar with, so they don't emit or reflect light. Dark matter plays a big role in the universe's structure and evolution. Its gravitational pull helps galaxies form and holds them together. Without dark matter, galaxies would just fly apart because of their rotational speeds. Dark energy is a term used to describe the unknown force that's thought to be responsible for the accelerated expansion of the universe. The story begins with observations made in 1998 that show distant galaxies were moving away from us faster than expected. See, before scientists thought the expansion of the universe would slow down over time because of the gravitational attraction between galaxies, but these observations showed Quite the opposite, that the expansion just continues to speed up over time. To explain this accelerated expansion, scientists proposed the existence of dark energy. Unlike normal matter and energy, dark energy doesn't interact with light or other forms of electromagnetic radiation, which is why it's dark and difficult to detect directly. But what exactly is this dark energy? Well, that's still one of the biggest mysteries in physics. There are some theories that attempt to explain it, but none have been confirmed. And we finish off the list with black holes. Is there anything more mysterious in the universe than black holes? Probably, actually, given the vast size of it. But from what we've seen, these things take the number one spot for biggest mystery, especially when we try to understand them using the rules of quantum mechanics. At the heart of a black hole, there's this tiny point called a singularity, where everything gets squished into an insanely dense point and then seems to just disappear. And this is where our understanding of physics kind of breaks down. Quantum mechanics tells us that information is never truly lost. All the quantum information about an object can't just disappear. One of the laws of physics states the total amount of quantum information in the universe must be conserved. But it certainly seems like anything that falls into a black hole is just lost forever. This contradiction is known as the black hole information paradox. And this is where tons of theories spring up about exactly what happens to things that get sucked into black holes. Does an object's quantum information just become part of the black hole and then it just kind of grows larger over time? Is there some kind of void that the objects just exist in somewhere in there? Do black holes act as wormholes, transporting things to other parts of the universe? We really don't know. What I do know is that I am going to catch you Yes, you specifically, in the next video. Mm -hmm.